I didn't lie, I simply just made an educated guess as to whether or not I was going to continue reviewing Marvel Legends. I thoroughly enjoyed covering the movie legacy Deadpool that came out earlier this summer and subsequently the astonishing X-Men Wolverine that came out just uh, I want to say a few weeks later. I really enjoyed putting together those reviews even though they were one-offs and didn't really cater to the niche of this channel which is Batman and Spider-Man. And since a lot of you kind of received them fairly well, I would say, I thought that maybe the Deadpool and Wolverine figures that were then announced shortly thereafter at Comic-Con by Dan and Dwight, not Ryan, because Ryan, I'm sorry, Ryan and Dwight, not Dan, because Dan skipped it out as he always kind of does. But finally, with the Marvel snipers out of the way since the movie was already out, they were able to announce that they were bringing us proper Deadpool and Wolverine figures, specifically this glorious Wolverine with the yellow and blue suit. It was kind of a no-brainer, especially since other companies were doing theirs, Beast Kingdom, Hot Toys, we saw the mask, we saw the statues, and I felt like I was m propelled in that direction after the somewhat good graces that I was kind of put into with Marvel Legends from covering that movie legacy Deadpool. And it was around the same time that I covered the Let There Be Carnage, Carnage, and I was very favorable of those figures. Those figures were legitimately badass and were worth the money. Since then, we've gotten a couple of very off-put releases. This is the Across the Spider-Verse stuff and a couple of other things that are catering to the retro card that I felt were a bit overpriced. Is that going to be the same case with these new releases catering to arguably the biggest movie of the year and the most profitable rated R movie ever made? I'm going to cover probably the easiest one out of the bunch, which is going to be Deadpool. And you could probably imagine why. It's the guess that I took in very good confidence when they announced that they were going to be bringing us a proper Deadpool and Wolverine or Deadpool 3, whatever you really want to call it, Deadpool figure. Because after that movie Legacy, improper tradition with Marvel Legends, they were going to give us a repaint. Spoiler alert, it's a repaint. <laughs> it's effectively, at least from my perspective, a repaint of the movie Legacy Deadpool. But I know that a lot of you would then consider the movie Legacy Deadpool to be a remaster or repackage or retool of the 2016 Deadpool with some mix and match of the accessories. And it looks like it's not that much of a no-brainer here with the proper Deadpool and Wolverine version because it's effectively the same exact figure. Initially though, I was a little off-put by some proportioning issues that were happening with the arms when I pulled them out of the box. But... I thought to myself, maybe it's the color scheming because as we would noted with some of those onset photos, they went with a lighter red hue for the suit itself from the movie in terms of the costume design. And Marvel Legends it properly made one that has a lighter shade of red. So maybe that was the thing that was throwing me off. And to confirm, here we have the movie Legacy Deadpool that I covered a few months prior. And you could see that, yeah, it's very apparent that they went with that lighter red and this Thankfully, I want to say for the most part, put some issues to rest as far as those proportions. I thought that there was something kind of funky happening with the arms. And though I still think that they did kind of shave off just a few millimeters of sculpting off the forearms and a little bit of the bicep and around the areas of the legs, pre predominantly the limbs. It's the limbs that's really throwing me off. And subsequently, that's also making him... Again, I don't know if it's some kind of optical illusion, but it is kind of making him just a little bit shorter than the movie Legacy version. But apart from that, you can see how stark the difference is between the red. And some people have already called that out when they were comparing onset photos. And it really falls down to preference. I feel like most people kind of cater towards the muted red from the first two movies, myself included. But I did warm up to the brighter red, especially when you finally see it in film. Those onset photos without the color grading, without any proper lighting... Yeah, it looked a little Halloween costumey, but after a while, and once you see it in movie, after you're kind of invested into the world and kind of have it sink in, the red definitely feels a little bit more at home. And I feel like in figure form, that doesn't necessarily non-translate, if that's even a word. It's no difference in terms of me warming up to the red and thinking, you know what, in action figure form, it's starting to blend together a little bit better, especially since you take into account not only the smoothness of the costume itself, since this is technically a brand new costume made by the pervy tailor, but also you're missing an awful lot of the battle damage. You'll notice that you have so many much more creases. You even have a few bullet holes and scratches here on the chest area for the original movie legacy because it's meant to be the one from Deadpool 2 after he's already worn it for some time. Here, 
it's clean, it's a little bit more smoothed out, it's a little bit less texture, and he's got the gold accents for some of the buckles and straps and things like that that are kind of holding everything together, including the gold accents on the hands. So you see an awful lot of that very obvious difference, and it does feel a little pared down, but again, that's more so of a hark on the design itself. If you have any issues with that, I understand that it's mainly on the, on the design, and I'm fully self-aware of that. So I kind of wish that he had a little bit more happening with like the cargo pockets around the belts, the, the straps that you see in, around the holster area. You see, it looks just a little bit more barren on the newer suit, but that's more so from a design level. So all in all, you can see that they smoothed out the suit itself and that kind of made it seem like he's a little bit thinner, but it just ultimately boiled down to an optical effect. So thankfully, I don't feel like they kind of pulled back on giving us less for more of a price. So at least there I was able to kind of temper down a little bit. And once I kind of looked at the focal central area here as far as the chest area, the detail on the straps and the pecs and the area right here that I think is much much more one-to-one -one with the original figure, more so than the limbs, that's where I thought to myself, yeah, it is effectively just this figure. They took the blueprints chisel it down to kind of fit however it is that they they made the brand new design for the new suit and called it at that. Even the head sculpt, for the most part, is pretty much the same, except maybe the eyes are just squinting a little bit more. But apart from that, texture-wise, it's the same. You got the eyes. I really am failing to notice any distinguishable differences as far as anything that was sculpt-wise different, apart, of course, from the different red hue. So... All in all, I would say it's, for the most part, the same exact figure, and ultimately that boils down to the articulation also being about the same. Head rotates 360 on its peg and is able to definitely look up pretty decently, look down a little bit, but you're just going to have to sh shift it a little forward on the ball joint. And tilting side to side is pretty modest, not too bad. I would say I would like for it to have inclined a little further. I don't know if maybe this would have been a good opportunity since this is kind of, like I said, a repackage or revision or repaint to then include some secondary jointage, if that's even a word, here at the base of the neck, but I digress. The I got to be honest, I'm going to breeze on through a little bit here because effectively everything else is about the same. It really is. The arms can fully rotate on a ratcheted position here at the ball joint and the hinge inside allows it to extend towards the sides right there, swiveling at the 360 movement there for the biceps two joints at the elbows though do be careful when pressing them because initially one will only move versus the other you kind of have to give it a little bit of a firmer press on the top one to be able to bend at both points and the wrist joints can definitely rotate 360 as well as allowing the hinge inside of the the hand itself to pivot inwards and outwards like so the upside down mid torso hinge though do be careful with the strap across his chest that will stretch because of you pressing and crunching inwards and outwards but it is a little bit ratcheted right about right there he technically does have a waist cut however i do feel like the belt as well as the pouches kind of hugs onto it a little tighter than the original movie legacy version so it can nudge side to side but i do feel quite a bit of resistance when i get to like about that angle right there so i don't want to press my luck just yet but it does kind of stop right about right there, so do be careful. No real 360 movement as far as I can tell, which is kind of unfortunate. The top leg joints can definitely allow the leg to extend forwards about that far, almost at a full 90 degree angle. Extension towards the back is actually pretty good as far as allowing it to get past the katana sh uh, sheath right about right there, as well as the pockets, like I mentioned before. And the hinge does allow extension towards the sides. However, the holsters for where you put the guns inside, as well as, like I said, those belt straps and pouches come into contact, so it can only stop at about right about right there. Though they did a good job of masking the swivels just a little bit better than the movie legacy version because of the way that the holsters can now have these straps kind of circumvent the entirety of the very massive Rather massive thigh, you know, kudos to him not skipping leg day. But you'll notice right there that they baked the swivels right on top right here. So they did an excellent job of masking them and kind of making them look a little bit more natural to the figure versus the way that they look like on the movie Legacy. Because on the movie Legacy, you can see those thigh cuts very blatantly. Then the two knee joints can fully bend all the way up like so. And like I said, it really boils down to preference if you like these shin guards right here i gotta be honest they look a little too slim i don't know what it is but there's something about them that i just personally do not like but on the bright side they do allow a little bit better flexibility for the feet to bend downwards and upwards better than the movie legacy version so there's a little bit of refinement there though because it's a movie marvel legends it can only pivot 
from side to side inwards and outwards like so. No real rotation. You're going to have to rely on the thigh swivel. So you see right there that I just kind of breezed right on through right there because there's really no point in kind of distinguishing anything differently than what we didn't already cover with the movie Legacy version. Though, here's where we unfortunately get to the very massive negative of this brand new version of the Deadpool and Wolverine. Because you'll notice that articulation was about the same. So there was this naive part of me that was hoping that everything else remains the same. But it doesn't. You see, it's one thing to repaint the figure and simply just call it at that. And maybe, you know, include most of the articulation, the functionality, everything else is about the same. And that kind of creates like a little bit of a breadcrumb mentality of like, well, if that's going to be the same, if the paint work, the sculpting is going to be the same, articulation, then surely the accessories are going to be about the same since we're paying the same price, right? Technically, we are wrong. I purposely demonstrated Deadpool here without any accessories because you'll notice that he's missing his iconic katanas. And that's because technically he does come with them. And frankly, I couldn't really pick apart any noticeable details that are different from the movie Legacy version. They're painted and sculpted exactly the same and can go on his sheets exactly the same. So nothing terribly remarkable there. Same thing with the dagger, painted and sculpted exactly the same. And this time it goes on a sheet that's placed on his right leg as opposed to the left leg like the movie Legacy version. And I don't know if it's because it's on the right leg, but it goes in there and gets taken out much more smooth than the original. It's a bitch to get the dagger out of that sheath. No problems here whatsoever. Comes out and in rather smoothly, so they definitely fixed that. A much needed improvement. And he does come with, of course, his two double pistols, his Desert Eagles, I believe they are referred to. However, you'll notice that they are black. And even though they're sculpted and molded very decently and can fit into either the holsters or the included trigger hands right about right here, which are also boasting the gold accents there at the back of the hands to signify that these are the Deadpool 3 or Deadpool and Wolverine hands that you can swap in and out. A couple of things. One, the pistols are not gold. This would have been a perfect opportunity to have the pistols be golden like they were in the climax for Deadpool and Wolverine. Very huge missed opportunity since we already got black Desert Eagles for the movie Legacy version. Two, when swapping out the hands, for some reason, I don't know if this is a QC problem and they're supposed to be glued onto the wrists, but those little black straps that he has around the wrists, they come off. Every time I swap out the hands, they easily come off and could easily get lost. At one point, I actually did lose one of them and I had to look around my room for a good like five minutes. Eventually, I found it. But I'm just saying that in the occasion that I can't find it and get scooped up by a vacuum when I decide to clean, boom, it's gone. And so... I don't know, again, that could be attributed to a QC problem with, uh, that's an isolated incident with mine that didn't, simply just didn't get glued. And granted, that's something that I can do myself. I can maybe glue it on later on, but still, the fact that it's present here, it's a little, a little bit of a concern. But that's not my biggest concern. My biggest concern is that that's frankly it for the accessories. You got the pistols, which we're going to go ahead and just kind of holster them here for now. The extra trigger hands... On top of the holding hands, he comes with by default to hold either the dagger or his katanas. All right. That's about it. Movie Legacy Deadpool came with an added pair of fisted hands and an added pair of like extend, extending, joking gesture hands. Like he's like this, like what? You know, like whoa, like this. And then he also came with the piece of resistance, the unicorn plushie from the first movie. You get an awful lot of bang for your buck for 25 bucks. Here, same exact price, but you're taking away accessories and you're kind of chiseling down on the suit, which you kind of needed to do in order to be able to fit the design for the new movie. But come on, the hands... Okay, fine, take away the plushie. Take away the unicorn plushie. Go sanitize it. But no added gesture hands? No fist hands? Something that I can guarantee being Marvel doesn't cost you an awful lot to include. The The print is already there. You literally released it months ago and you can't release it here? That's it? Nah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if this triggers any of you, but this is inexcusable. I feel like that's bullshit. For the same price and then yet you take away? Come on. No. This is a good, objectively a good figure, but I can't condone this kind of practice right here. 
This is something that I was looking at and going, maybe they changed something in the articulation. Maybe he's going to be able to pose a lot better than the original. No, I don't really see anything that really adds to the character, adds to the figure. And the fact that you're taking away accessories, I'm sorry, but this effectively made the figure almost kind of redundant when already owning the movie legacy version that the only way to make this guy look a bit more appealing is to be paired with the really cool looking yellow suit Wolverine. And this is in fact the big one. This is the one I was looking forward to the most because even though I am now two for two as far as owning yellow and blue suit proper Wolverines that are inspired from the comics, I mean, come on, we were all waiting for the yellow and blue suit to be presented not only in live action, but with Hugh Jackman wearing the suit. It would have been a disservice, a huge injustice if Wolverine was recast and they got the proper suit, but not Hugh Jackman, who really gave it his all to the role for almost, actually, no, yeah, practically 24, almost 25 years. So, yeah, I needed to kind of check this box as far as fulfilling the desire to own a Marvel Legends, as well as other versions of this character from other companies, such as Ace H Figure Arts, maybe that Hot Toys. Hot Toys looks legitimately awesome, but I have yet to put down my pre-order, so we'll see what happens with that. But at least in a much more affordable sense, for 25 bucks, we get the Marvel Legends interpretation, which right out of the box, and even from some of those promo photos, I knew that if they can really hone in on some of that really good technology of like proper faces that they were doing for some of those shrunken that like there's been a number of head sculpts as to, to take a live action character and put him in figure form that even I'm like wow he's come a long way from actually honing in on a good likeness the head sculpts that are included with this figure which we'll cover the second one momentarily but at least the default one which is of course the iconic mask was in fact pulled off exquisitely that head sculpt right here with the texturing of the yellow the paneling that's happening with the uh the, the, the handles, let's call them that, <laughs> to keep it PG. The handles that are on his head right there, sculpted effectively nice with the scowl that he's got going on with his brow right there and the expression. But then, of course, the slight likeness that you kind of get across a little bit with the mouth plate as well as the stubble. It's an immaculate head sculpt. I absolutely love it. I stare at it and I'm like, yes, that is in fact Wolverine. And as we navigate the figure, I would say that they definitely nailed the texture of the suit. It definitely feels quality. It feels solid. You get an awful lot of the yellow and the little textured patterns to the blue as well as all of the shield plating for the suit. It, fe it feels tactile. Like That's the word that comes to mind is that it feels very tactile, very solid. You get your money's worth as far as feeling something that doesn't feel cheap. It doesn't feel like a Happy Meals toy. I can confidently say that versus my last review pertaining to Marvel Legends. This does not feel like a Happy Meals toy. It actually legitimately feels like a Marvel Legends that you pick off the shelf at a brick and mortar store. And so I'm happy to report on that for the most part. And you can see that an awful lot of the quality put into the 3D printing for the plating here on the shoulders, the gauntlets, how they kind of smoothed out the matte finish on the gauntlets to be a little bit more, I guess you can argue lacy, as well as the way that the boots feel. Everything, like I said, feels very Kevlar-esque, tactile, and it feels like a legitimately honed-in suit. My problem, however, would have to be the proportioning. The proportioning that I was... Fearing would happen to Deadpool only to be uh, kind of arriving at the result that it was simply just an optical illusion demonstrated by the color scheming. Here, unfortunately, there's no illusions to be made. I personally feel like the proportioning that they applied to the body for Wolverine are frankly kind of terrible. I, I gotta be honest. I don't know what it is, but there's just so many mishaps happening with the proportions. They nailed the texture. They nailed the sculpting of the suit. But they couldn't beef up my man. He is Hugh Jackman. He went back to eating nothing but chicken and rice for days. And you give him a dad bod? It's a shame because you see an awful lot of like the ridges here on the sides. The X on the belt. Like I said, the plating for the suit that overall looks great from the naked eye. Minus the little bit of scuffing and QC problems we got with this like little black stuff that I can't really scratch off. So I don't know what kind of... Solution I'm going to have to find in order to be able to get rid of that. But once you look past it, like I said, I really love how everything kind of gets plated right here. The sculpting, the way that the wrinkles are presented right here to make it look like a legitimate suit. It's just the proportions where you have 
a little bit of a gut happening right here. You know, he still looks pretty stonky, but even in some of those onset photos where he was wearing the suit, he still had a little bit of a chiseled kind of V look to his upper body. And sure, Hugh Jackman's, you know, pushing 55, kind of getting up to 60. But again, we've seen the photos, we've seen the stuff that was shared by Sean Levy, and then we saw the movie where the, the suit finally comes off. And we get the glory hallelujah shot that impressed everyone, including Deadpool himself and even me. I, I Even I was like, all right, well, I guess this is happening now. <laughs> but I simply just don't see that happening here in six-inch format. And I, frankly, I feel like they could have done it. I feel like we have another situation where I can't help but tinfoil hat my way into believing that maybe different teams were handling this figure in terms of one handling the limbs, one handling the torso, and then finally someone was then designed or, or hired or put to put all these pieces together and give us the final result because like I said an awful lot of the texture work is very very well done but then you look at the arms right next to the torso and look how thin the arms look compared to the torso it's just something just so really strangely off put now I'm not gonna go as far as to say that I hate the figure you know uh, I I know it's customary for me to not be in favor of Marvel Legends, you know, it's my, it's one of my customs, but I can't bring myself to say that I hate the figure because again, the texture work is there, the the sculpting behind the gloves as well as the subsequent knives that come out of his knuckles right here for the claws is very well done, minus a little bit of warping that I got on mine for the right, but overall they're really well done as well as being able to articulate the figure to put him in a really good assortment of poses. Head's got the ball joint that's able to rotate fully 360 as well as being able to tilt slightly up, slightly down, actually a little bit further down than I was expecting, and slightly side to side, actually Screw that. I think it kind of tilts side to side even better than Deadpool. So that's a little surprising, but also kind of disappointing that we couldn't get that with Deadpool. But despite the shoulder guards, the articulation happening here on the top arm is still pretty favorable. You'll notice that it's actually very ratcheted and very firm. So it kind of pivots from joint or from placement to placement very thoroughly, but can still rotate full 360 vertically as you can see right there hinge inside of the ball joint can still allow extension to happen though it does stop a little short because of the shoulder guard but being masked by the black kevlar-esque kind of piece right there there is a little bit of butterfly joint happening right there that allows the arm to kind of flex forward and back not as much as one would desire it to be i feel like there could have been a few extra degrees to be able to bend in certain ways but still that's more than what i was kind of expecting due to like i said the stocky nature of the suit itself but i still kind of appreciate that they were able to cut out enough spacing for the butterfly to really happen and translate there the biceps, despite how narrow they kind of feel versus, like I said, the torso, can still fully rotate 360 right there, no problem. Joints on the elbows are very similar to that of Deadpool, where they can definitely bend at both joints, but because of how sticky the top one is, you kind of have to give it an extra little bit of a press to be able to flex both joints. Otherwise, only the bottom one will move freely by just giving it the bend right there without any other extra effort and the claw hands right here can definitely bend inwards and outwards as well as rotate in place due to that classic marvel legends joint for the wrist and even though he's got a bit of a dead bod happening he still has the upside down hinge for the mid torso that allows it to crunch inwards about that far and then extend towards the back pretty favorably on a ratcheted position about that far and then unlike Deadpool, he's got a waist cut. However, the belt does not come in any kind of conflict with it. And it's also ratcheted. It even has a little bit of a clicking noise happening right there. So it can fully rotate 360. Top leg joints can extend towards the front about right there that far. And even towards the back slightly despite how much massive his ass is versus that of Deadpool's. It's quite surprising. But then again, he doesn't skip like they. Extension towards the sides is a bit more favorable than that of Deadpool's because of lack of pouches. And even though they weren't able to mask it as well as Deadpool, he still has the thigh swivels right there that can cut across 360 no problem. Two knee joints right there that can fully bend all the way up. A little bit more favorable than that of Deadpool's without any extra work. And yes, it's still a Marvel Legends, so you got the ankle joints that can definitely bend downwards and upwards slightly, though they are a little bit more firmer and tougher than that of Deadpool's but they can definitely stay in position and can pivot inwards and outwards, no problem. Now, unlike Deadpool, he doesn't really come with too many weaponry since 
he is, in fact, the weapon. I mean, frankly, one of his aliases is Weapon X, obviously. So they didn't really need to do too much, but Marvel Legends was still going to throw in a little something something. He does still come with two extra hands to be able to swap out for the clawed hands, very simply. So one of them is going to be a naturally fisted hand for the right. And then for the left, he's got a slightly open, kind of gestating, kind of trigger hand. It's not really a trigger hand. It's more like a gestating, like he's designed to hold something, but... He really didn't come with anything else to hold, so I guess if you were to get the other Logan, the Cloth Logan, or the Civ Logan, if you want to call him that, the one from the bar, that technically comes with head pull. I guess you can use this hand to hold head pull in his hand. It really depends on you. But I really do appreciate that minus the claws, you can really appreciate more the textured look on the gloves as well as the... I don't know what these are called, but basically where the claws come out of, they're really well painted and etched. But I think something would be seriously wrong with you if you weren't to consider that the best accessory thrown in with this Wolverine is the unmasked Hugh Jackman head sculpt. Look at this thing. Look at it. All right, this is where Marvel Legends can really shine because lately they've been kind of killing it when it comes to the likenesses. I've been genuinely surprised how well they've been getting uh, like natural looking head sculpts for likenesses of celebrities and actors that appear in either the MCU or the Star Wars shows and movies. I mean, say what you want, but like I said, one of my favorite Marvel Legends that I've seen in the store, still haven't picked it up, but ever so often I would tell myself, if I find it on clearance, maybe I'll do it. That's She-Hulk, though, even though she's mostly CG, but there's been a couple of other like live-action characters that I will look at and go, yo, that actually looks like them, only shrunken down in six-inch format for Marvel Legends, and this is not exactly an exception. That is, in fact, Hugh Jackman, a little aged, a little bit with sunken eyes, but that kind of makes sense for the character. Great work on the head hair in terms of actually bringing us one of the more contemporary looks to the classic Wolverine hairdo that doesn't look so uh, terrible and very obviously like a reshoot with the original X-Men. But here it looks a bit more natural. I really love how well chiseled and painted the hair really is across almost the entirety of the head sculpt. Though, I think a little bit could have been done better for the lamp chops right here on the side of his uh, sideburns. But otherwise, the expression is awesome. And when he's boasting the, the head sculpt right here, which you can easily swap out for, bam. I mean, yeah, it definitely, if anything, it kind of creates, you know, speaking of optical illusions, it does make my complaints about the torso look a little better. If anything, I don't know what it is, but maybe... I'm expecting him to kind of show off a little bit of the guns when wearing this head sculpt because that's kind of how it looked like in the movie. When he wore this mask, he was already showing off the body. He was already showing off the arms. I'm getting a little sussy now. Hugh Jackman is, in fact, one of my man crushes, so you can't really blame me. But wearing the Jackman mold, the my complaints about the mid-torso having a bit of a dad bod and the proportioning does kind of get a little bit mitigated, but... I still acknowledge that it's present, and I feel like that's still something that they could have worked at, maybe if they had some extra time to cook, and maybe within that time, I don't know, maybe Deadpool would have come with, damn it, <laughs> maybe with that extra cook time, Deadpool would have come with some extra accessories, and I know that it's kind of difficult to see what exactly they could have pulled without maybe outright spoiling the movie, but again, this is Deadpool and Wolverine we're talking about, there's a number of things that he did use in that movie, maybe the dimensional jumper or i'm sorry the uh, timeline jumper whatever it was called i'm uh, the the time pad whatever it was called from the tva the um weapon that he used at the beginning of the movie in a very very morbid fashion so I, i'm sorry but even i'm coming up with ideas and so that effectively makes me say in good conscience that if you already have the original movie Legacy Deadpool, whether it be the reissue that was released this summer or even the one that was released back in 2018 when Deadpool 2 properly came out, it feels just a little empty, a little redundant to pick up this version. Unless you're a completionist or you really do favor the lighter shade of red, you can kind of flat out skip this because for about the same price, if you're able to find that movie Legacy version, if you missed out on a pre-order but you can still track it down for 30 bucks or less... You're getting more accessories, you're getting, in my opinion, subjectively speaking, a much better color scheme, and it, effectively, it just makes for a much more definitive experience from Marvel Legends for a movie version of Deadpool. Whereas this version, 
I would argue, yes. From a visual standpoint, he pairs beautifully with the Hugh Jackman yellow suit Wolverine from the new movie. And the head sculpts, both the unmasked version and the masked version, are top-notch. They are excellent. The texture work on the suit feels solid. Neither of these figures feel like Happy Meals toys. They definitely feel like very quality, effective Marvel Legends. But again, they're far from perfect. I feel like they held back on the accessories that makes this guy a little bit of a lackluster deal if you already have the movie legacy version. And therefore, I can't recommend it if you do have that version. However, you missed out on it and you come across it on the store, can't blame you if you do in fact pick it up. And that goes double if you manage to find the Wolverine right there next to it. I mean, it's kind of a given. 50 bucks across the board, this is not a bad package. But just know that my personal complaints came in the form of a dad bot that feels the proportioning to be a little off with Wolverine here and the lack of accessories. But to celebrate a movie where you get both of these iconic characters played by the actors that were born to play these roles, I would say that Marvel Legends could have done worse and feel like this is probably as best as it's going to be. And therefore, both figures managed to get a combined score, a 7 out of 10. I don't hate any of these figures, but they still have a long way to go to make definitive interpretations. And who's to say that maybe entering 2025, they'll take some of these things into consideration. We'll get more variants that came from that movie, other versions of both Deadpool, other versions of Wolverine. Because trust me, we saw plenty in there that make us kind of build up a little bit of a checklist for what we would want to see in the scale. And I feel like if they know what's right, hey, Marvel Legends, you guys are going to make bank. And maybe customers will be happy. But just take into consideration the proportion problems found with Wolverine and the accessory problem with Deadpool. Because less isn't always more especially when the price stays the same. Are you guys in the market to be tracking down the Deadpool and Wolverine figures from the new movie? Are you guys excited to see if Marvel Legends is going to tackle other people, other variants, other little Easter eggs, other characters that made their surprise appearance in the film? I mean, most of you already know, but just for posterity, I'm not going to say who, but let me know down below what you guys would love to see as far as your checklist from Deadpool and Wolverine that you would like to see Marvel Legends tackle. I feel like I'm going back and forth in a tennis match. They release something cool, but for every cool thing they release, there's a not so cool thing. So I'm going to have to be very pick and choosy, just like they are with quality. I'm going to have to be pick and choosy with my wallet. But for the time being, if you guys manage to put down your pre-order for the Marvel Legends Deadpool and Wolverine, or you manage to come across it in the store, let me know down below your guys' experience. And while you're down there, hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video. Thumbs down if you did not. As always, shout out to our executive producers at the level 2 tier for supporting this video as well as the rest on the channel, Tom Bolin. And in the meantime, you guys know what to do. Stay humble, and I'll catch you guys later.